My name is Kendra Luebuga, and I love painting in watercolor and gouache. I like using these Neocolor 2s and the Ink Tense pencils. And that's what we're going to talk about today, is mostly more experiments with Neocolor 2s and Ink Tense pencils. So this week I have been fascinated with irises. Our iris patch out in front is going bonkers. It's really, you know, it, it shows up for about a week or maybe two weeks in May and then it's done for the rest of the year. And so when it's here, I generally try to do something with it. There's a little one. And this year, I tried so many experiments with making paintings with iris and I think I found a style that makes me very happy. You may recognize this. I put it on my Instagram feed, but more importantly, this is one of Van Gogh's most famous paintings of irises that he did back in May of 1889. I found it online, but I also have this lovely little book that came from a little game and it has um, some of his images. So I decided to try that out using the Neocolor 2 crayons and water media and also a little bit of the ink tense pencils. So his was done in oil on, I think on a board. And of course this is done with Neocolor 2s and water base, um, water, water media painted. And this paper is hot press watercolor paper. So this is a smooth kind of watercolor paper um, that I did in this little journal. That was my first attempt at doing a Coptic binding and making my own watercolor sketchbook. So I've done many trials and I have a few different little process videos so I can show you how I put these together. Um, I'm rather pleased. Let's see if it's forwards or backwards. You know, I don't go sequentially through my books. Uh, here's a very brilliant one. This one's done on cold press paper, and I think you can see a little bit more of the texture of those neocolors writing on top of the paper because of the texture of the paper versus this very smooth, you see the very smooth way that the smooth paper takes the crayon. Personally, I find that drawing on this smooth paper is more enjoyable because these these crayons are, they feel very, just like, feel very waxy. I don't think they're waxy because they're water soluble, but they, they go on very smooth, on smooth paper. They're a little bit bumpy here and um, it's an interesting texture um, and lovely for some things. So, so that's the trial I did on that. And then I also pulled out this book. This is a Strathmore and it's a 90 pound. And I've had this for a long time. I did some experiments in gouache in here. This is an image from a photograph that I took in Zanzibar, which is off the coast of East Africa. This woman is making rope from coconut shells that she had buried in the sand some months before. Um, they break down and then she digged them up and then she rubs it together and created a bit of rope. So I paid her some money to take her picture and she also gave me a small piece of her rope. I was there in 1995 and I was researching the architecture of Stonetown, which is the main town on Zanzibar Island. But for one day, I went out into the Shamba, into the, into the forests and farm fields and um, with a guide and um, got to see how the traditional architecture is done. Anyway, I'll have to show all these later, but this week, so this is a smooth paper, 90 pound, so even less heavy than this paper, but smooth because it's, I haven't had luck in actual watercolor on this, 
on this paper in this sketchbook. Gouache, yes, and these other media, yes, but not watercolor. But it does take the neo colors very nicely, and this is a mixture of ink tense pencil lines and the neo color too, and really very lightly um, touched with my brush and water. And I put over here all the colors that I was using here. I did one dot of the solid, and then I just did a circle so that I could see that lighter color. Because as you'll see, the lighter bits of the iris that are at the top are a lighter color because you're seeing the back of their leaves. And then the parts that fold down are a much darker color. So that's a little bit of the value differentiation in these, in these um, flowers. And then I went back, so never mind these old trees that I was trying to do once, but I went backwards and I looked again at this um, drawing that I'd made of hellebores and um, started to bump it up with the same strategy, Van Gogh's strategy of putting this blue line around the leaves and accentuating the leaves quite a bit. But I rather like it. And you can see these white bits. I toned down the color by using this thing, Liquitex acrylic marker. So, so that's the explorations that I did this week. I want to show you my process and, and let's go. All right, thanks for being here. Okay, hi there. I wanted to show you a tiny bit of my process of painting Van Gogh's masterpiece just so that I could show you his painting right here. So this was the inspiration for a lot of things, putting that blue color around the leaves and even painting the stems a different color from what they really are. So here's one of the paintings that I did from my own garden, from my own images, from my own garden. And um, what I did is First, I put down some ink tense pencil marks and applied a little bit of color to those, and then added some of the Neo Color 2s, as you are seeing me do just a minute ago, and you'll see me do it again. There's that Neo Color 2. This is aubergine, this color. It's the English word for eggplant. And so I put that over the top of the wet paper. And then I apply a little bit more color. It works very well. So now you see me painting in so it's turning blue because that was an ink tense pencil um, in blue. I think it's like iron blue or something like that. And the same here with this leaves. This was just a green, one of the many colors of green that I have in the ink tense pencil line. And I'm putting in the color of the leaf first and then I'll go over it with that blue um, Neo Color 2. I've tried it a couple of different ways as you'll see in this process video. Um, sometimes I integrate that blue into the color of the leaf and sometimes I just put the color on after I've put the color of the leaf. Both ways work and both ways show a slightly different um, textural component to the leaf. All right, so this is basically the process. I'm going to show you a lot of the same kind of thing. It's a lot of layering. It's a lot of um, putting down some colors, activating it with water, um, oftentimes waiting for that to dry, and then going in with some other colors over the top, activating those colors, and then waiting for it to dry. Um, I guess another thing I'd like to point out is that you will see a lot of times I don't copy right over the line that I drew before when I'm doing the outline of anything, of the flower, of the stem, of the leaves. I like that sketchy quality where the lines don't exactly meet up. Um, I think it gives energy to the painting. So perhaps if you know, if you're the type that likes to trace over very carefully, uh, maybe try it out. Try just 
being really loose and not minding if your lines don't match up. Another thing that you might notice is that as I go along with this, um, I just add whatever at whatever time. I don't do a complete underdrawing. Um, I'm now adding blooms where they don't exist in my picture. And later on, I will draw leaves and other things that don't exist in the picture. For me, it's way too tedious to draw out the leaves, for instance, in the way that they really show up in the picture. So I just look at my own painting and then just notice that I like to have it where the leaves cross over one another and intersect with the stems. And so I just try to create that and I try to remember that the leaves are, that are at the front are going to be bigger and the leaves as they go back are going to be smaller. Just a rule of perspective. And it doesn't have to meet for every single leaf or every single, well maybe for the flowers it does, but it's just a rule of thumb. Yeah. <laughs> other drawing paintings that I did. This was in that Strathmore um, sketchbook and this is a grouping of the iris flowers that I had cut early in the week. Um, I think on Monday I cut a few stems and put them in a in a jar in, on my desk and I watched them all week and after a while the old blooms shriveled up and the newer blooms that were further down on the plant all blossomed at the same time. So um, by this day, I think it was maybe Thursday, all of these had bloomed so nicely. And so I wanted to draw it. I wanted to capture just this big clump of blooms. And um, of course, in that, um, in that Van Gogh way, where the leaves are these big chunky masses and um, and perhaps they're not in the color that they really are in life. For sure, I'll tell you that my um, iris plants, they're all purple, as you saw in the very beginning of this video. They're not this pink color. Um, I love playing with the different colors and as you'll see a little bit later on in this painting video, the stems that I draw are going to be a deep blue color because I want to pay attention to my palette in such a way that I'm choosing colors that go with one another um, in a pleasing way that um, also brings in that bit of um, you know the artistic license that you're not really um, adhering to the reality of life. Mm -hmm. 